Hi! Have you ever wondered why it is important to keep a halogen bulb behind intact glass? Unfortunately, the manuals I have seen do not explain why. Is it because of the excessive heat from halogen lamps? I believe it is, but not just to keep you from touching the hot bulb. Actually, the glass is likely there to protect you against some nasty invisible radiation caused by the heat. Let's have a look at it. Don't let hot lights set you alight. Do not touch the glass of halogen bulbs, hot or cold. And limit your exposure to ultraviolet radiation, especially UVB and UVC. This is my strongest halogen lamp. With a 400 watt quartz bulb, I believe it is a perfect candidate for visualizing the invisible issue with halogen lamps. To see the spectrum of light coming from it, I will use my USB spectrometer. Beautiful! The shape of the spectrum coming from the glowing hot tungsten wire is not far from that of the classic black body radiation. Most of the light is in the visible range with wavelengths ranging from 400 to 700 nanometers. Quite a lot is in the invisible near infrared, which you will feel as heat. And there is even some invisible ultraviolet light. I have set the cursor at the border between UVA and UVB, around 315 nanometers. So the ultraviolet output is in the UVA range. Looks like the output is negligible below 325 nanometers. No UVB or UVC. Now let's try what the manual tells me not to do. Run the halogen lamp without the protective glass in front of it. There we go. The quartz bulb is now free. Will this make any difference? Yes, the difference may look subtle, but it is important. The lamp is now emitting the more energetic and DNA damaging UVB below 315 nanometers. Even a tiny bit of UVC below 280 nanometers. This output is caused by halogen lamps running at a higher temperature than regular incandescent lamps. You need to wear sunscreen and UV filtering glasses if working in this light. The sunscreen should even cover some of the UVC range, like this one with protection down to 250 nanometers. Or just use the glass as a filter to block the worst parts of the UV light, as it is meant to. It is made of cheap and common soda lime glass that doesn't transmit light under typically 330 nanometers. However, soda lime glass will not handle fast temperature changes well. So the halogen bulb itself is made of quartz glass instead. And quartz glass does transmit the UVB and C coming from the filament. That's why you need the extra glass to be intact. Now, in Denmark, halogen lamps are more or less replaced by more energy-efficient LED lamps. For comparison, this is my strongest LED lamp, a 200 watts model that outperforms the halogen lamp in many ways. Roughly double the output at half the input. Not bad at all. Though it is quite a large lamp with a massive heatsink. What does the spectrum from this one look like? Ah, that is bright, all right. The spectrum is, however, not the best I have seen. It is a good thing that there's basically no ultraviolet, but the valley in output around cyan and green is deep. This light is not suitable for color critical work. Halogen clearly wins in this respect. The good color rendering from halogen lamps is one of the reasons I still use them in two places in my home. Above the dinner table in my kitchen, because food, especially meat, just looks more delicious under good light. And above the mirror in my bathroom, because, well, skin looks more attractive under good light. The lights use smaller, less power-hungry halogen bulbs. 10 watts for the ones in the bathroom, which says UV filter on the packaging. That's a bit ambiguous. Does it mean they are already equipped with a UV filter? or need to be used with a UV filter. The one in the kitchen is 35 watts and says U slash V stop on the packaging. I guess they are filtered then. Let's test them for UV leakage. Yep, I am glad to see only a little UVA from it. How about the 10 waters? It is important not to touch halogen bulbs. 
The combination of finger oil on the glass and rapid heating to very high temperatures can stress the glass, making it blow up in worst case. Another safety reason to have halogen bulbs behind a cover of tempered glass. And yes, I am aware that I'm putting a G4 bulb into a GU5.3 socket. Not recommended, even though the voltage is right, but it will work for a short test. Is it UV filtered? Nope, this one is emitting UVB and needs filtering. That must be what this marking means. This other one must be filtered by the glass in front of it. Easy to test by simply removing the glass cover. Now it should emit UVB, right? Much to my surprise, I couldn't detect UVB, even without the cover glass. They may have used some form of coating on or dopants in the quartz. They really do mean UV stop. Well, UVB and C stop. The UVA is still there. Now, this result gave me something to think about. If the thin cover glass on the 35 water is not the main filter, then how well are the 10 waters in my bathroom filtered? Have I been bathed in UVB by them through the years? We will find out after a short but important message. A big, big thanks to all my patrons. Thank you so much for helping out. It's really appreciated and important for a niche channel with monthly quality uploads like mine. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link to my Patreon page in the description. Thank you. Okay, I have moved the spectrometer to the bathroom to test for any UVB output. Nice. I am happy to see that the cover glass does its job and filters out the UVB. After taking a closer look at the glass, I noticed it is thicker than the glass I removed from the 35 watts bulb. Almost twice as thick, which in itself should make it a more efficient filter. I therefore decided to test the two pieces of glass in a better setup. I will use my lab power supply as an advanced light dimmer. Yes, it sure is 10 watts at 12 volts DC. For some reason, this setup did not turn out to be a better test. I am not picking up much UVB here. Maybe some angle or reflection issue, but at least we can still see a drop in UVB with both pieces of glass. So the conclusion is clear. Always use glass covers for halogen bulbs, either as part of the fixture's enclosure or as part of the bulb itself, like these two examples. They simply put the halogen bulb inside the glass from a classic incandescent bulb. Nice use of remaining stock. And speaking of remaining stock, while making this video, I decided to buy some of the last halogens in Denmark before they disappear because of the import ban in EU. Including these 10 inch beauties. At 1500 watts, I am sure they are now my strongest lights. I just need a fixture for them. Comment if you want a video about them. Though this one may be even crazier. It fits the 500 watts fixtures I already have, but it is a thousand watts. What a beauty and a beast. According to the included paper sheet, it will only last for 50 hours. Even shorter if the glass isn't allowed to heat up enough to let the halogen cycle kick in. Seriously, did they forget to type the last zero in 500? In any case, hope you enjoyed this video enough to click like and perhaps subscribe for more like it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.